I'm Dr. Teresa Bowling, Vice Chairman of the Department of Anesthesia at the Stanford Hospital. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how we do tap blocks at the Stanford Hospital. Tap blocks are by far the largest volume of blocks we do, and every patient undergoing abdominal surgery here at the Stanford Hospital gets a tap block or a tap catheter. We use this procedure for hernia repairs, abdominal surgery including hysterectomy and laparoscopic ileocolectomies, open nephrectomies, and open cholecystectomies. There are two approaches that we use, the mid-axillary approach and the subcostal approach. We have found that the mid-axillary approach for needle insertion is best for procedures that are going to be done below the umbilicus. And we modify our approach to a subcostal approach for patients that are undergoing surgery between the xiphoid and the belly button. For tap blocks, we place our patients in the supine position on a stretcher. And we use our linear probe and we place it about the level of the umbilicus in the mid-axillary line. This is exactly what the image looks like at almost every single patient, the variable layer being the adipose tissue. There are three distinct muscle layers that are divided by fascial layers. We have the external oblique, divided by fascia with the internal oblique, and the thinnest layer, the transversus abdominis. Below that is the white line is the peritoneum, and you can see bowel moving and peristalsing below the level of the peritoneum. Our target is just deep to the internal oblique, above the belly of the transversus abdominis. The goal here is to split the fascia off of the muscle because the terminal roots of T7 through L1 lay on the belly of the transversus abdominis muscle. This is a large volume block requiring 20 to 30 cc's of local anesthetic per side. At Stanford Hospital, we currently use 20 cc's of quarter percent marcaine per side if we're doing a bilateral procedure. And um, we use 25 cc's of quarter percent marcaine per side for this block. If you adjust the probe for subcostal view and just hug the costal margin as you move medially towards the xiphoid, you're going to see the aponeurosis of the internal oblique. This is the approach we use for a patient that is having upper abdominal surgery. Instead of having three distinct muscle layers, we now have the rectus muscle and just the transversus muscle. And if you inject the local anesthetic in the same location, just deep to the fascia below the rectus, but above the belly of the transversus abdominis, you can achieve a more consistent higher level between T7 and T10. And they use the same volume of local anesthetic. So I scan back medially. You can see the three layers come back into play. The external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominis. To place a catheter or a needle on these patients, we use an anterior to posterior approach. And the needle placement is about a half a centimeter to a centimeter away from the ultrasound. And the trick here is to know not to, um, your, the direction of the needle is towards the spine, not to hug the probe. Because if you hug the probe, all you're going to do is pierce, uh, pierce the skin and the upper layers of the abdomen. So it's a little um, unnerving initially because you're pointing a needle right towards the patient's abdomen, but that's where your target is between the transverses abdominis and the internal oblique. If I'm doing catheters for a bowel resection or an open case, I try to place my probe as lateral as possible so that I'm as far out of the surgeon's field as I can be. After the catheter is placed, we'll secure it with a tegaderm uh, and tape the catheters as lateral as possible, again, to try to maintain a sterile field for the surgeons when they want to operate. We typically do this block at the beginning of the operation, but certainly at the end of the operation will give you the freedom to place the catheter a little more medially or in a subcostal location. This is Dr. Stephen Finkel from Stanford School of Regional Anesthesia. In this live block example for tap block, you can first see the needle coming uh, toward its target, but the first injection, which occurs right now, is going to sit above the proper fascial plane. You can see the local anesthetic pooling above the fascial plane. The needle is then advanced too far into the peritoneal cavity, where the second injection confirms the needle's too far. You can see the needle will be pulled back and right now. And the third injection, which sits in the proper plane, just underneath the fascia, in between the internal oblique and the uh, transverse abdominis muscle, is where you need your local anesthetic to be injected to ensure you have a proper block. For this block, we use 30 cc's of local anesthetic 
usually half percent ropivacaine. However, quarter percent marcaine can also be used.